Now, here's the most important part. It takes 17 minutes for your body to get into thermogenesis, the fat burning zone. What's up, fitness fam? Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new to my channel, welcome. I am Coach Claire. Okay, today is a really important topic. We're gonna talk about cardio, which is best and which is worse. So the six worst to best types of cardio to do, where your heart rate needs to be, and when to do it. Okay, let's get started with the worst type of cardio. The freaking incumbent bike or stationary bike. Oh, just no. Because what happens when you get on that thing? You're just like, ah, da -da, da -da, da -da, pedaling away. <laughs> no, it doesn't get your heart rate up enough because it doesn't really involve much of your body. Standing up cardio is always going to be better. So that's number one. Now, if you're going to do the spin bike, that's got a little bit better because you can stand up. Or if you're riding a bike outside, you know, then you can go up and down hills and, you know, you can really put your, your body into it by standing up. That's going to burn more calories than this, you know, recumbent bike or the lean back bike, which is even worse. I mean, how many times do you see people in the gym that are just sitting there going, you know, try to get their cardio in and they're barely getting their heart rate up. So speaking of heart rate, you want to make sure your heart rate's at 130 to 140 anytime that you do cardio. That is your best fat burning zone to be in. So make sure that you are in that area on your watch or whatever it is that you're using. I happen to use an Apple watch. That's just what I like. But whatever device you use, um, definitely try to aim for that target heart rate. Now, having said that, when is the best time to do cardio? Two things here, you either wanna do it fasted or post-lifting, why? So if you do it post-lifting, save your strength for your lift. That means when you get to the gym, you can warm up on the treadmill just walking or something like that, but save your cardio for after. Unless you're trying to like get really cardiovascularly fit, I mean, that's a whole different animal, but when you're lifting, save your strength for your lift. Now, here's the most important part. It takes 17 minutes for your body to get into thermogenesis, the fat burning zone, right? So when you're lifting, you get into that thermogenesis after 17 minutes or so, you'll notice your heart rate starts to really get up. So after you are finished lifting, take that heart rate into your cardio and you're gonna burn a lot more calories. It is the best way to torch fat. So definitely do your cardio post lifting. You can also do it fasted. Um, I can do a whole nother video on this if you want. So drop me a comment below if you wanna see this. But fasted is where you get up in the morning, you have coffee or water, and black coffee that is, um, you're in a fasted state after sleeping, and you do your cardio first thing in the morning. Start with 20 minutes, don't do any more than that. I've talked about this before. If you do too much cardio um, at first, your body's going to adjust, and then you're gonna to have to do more and more and more to see results. So be really careful with doing too much cardio. Always start with 20 minutes post-lifting or fasted. Um, I personally divide my workouts up, so I do a little bit of fasted cardio in the morning, and then I lift later in the day. That just works best for me, Not everybody has the luxury of doing that. So take that into consideration. Okay, that leads me to number five, the fifth worst type of cardio, in my opinion. Okay, it's just my opinion, uh, is the rower. Oh my gosh. Uh, now, if you're doing hit cardio, which I'm going to get into in a little bit, um, then it's a little more handy. The problem is with the rowing, you're just not using enough of your body to, to get a good heart rate up. Um, and you can't do it for long periods of time. So when, you know, I say this a lot too, but when you're lifting, you don't want to overtax the muscles because they won't grow if they're overtaxed. Um, thinking again, and I've talked about this before, looking at a marathon runner, they run every day. So they literally tax their muscles so much that they get long, lean, and stringy. So you've got to be careful with, um, you know, doing too much of these things. So that's why I don't do the rower very often. If I do the rower, it's going to be post back day and I'll do it in like a hit cardio type of situation. So the rower, eh. I wouldn't. <laughs> All right, number four, the treadmill. Yeah, you might be surprised to hear me say that because I talk about the treadmill a lot. However, the treadmill is not a one trick pony like some of the other cardio types of cardio, but um, what you wanna do if you're gonna utilize the treadmill is put the incline up. So many people are just walking on a flat surface and if, I mean, if you're, if you're really overweight, then I get it. That's going to get your heart rate up a little bit more. Um, but if you're already halfway fit, then no, put the incline up. And for God's sakes, let go. Don't hold on. How many times do we look around the gym and see people holding on for dear life and they've got the incline on like, I don't know, three? <laughs> so make sure that you're utilizing the treadmill correctly. 
Um, I do use it um, post lifting usually and here at home as well. I have a treadmill, a soft one. So um, if you have knee problems or hip problems, you know, a lot of times the treadmill is handy. But here's what I do and write this down so you have it. Put the speed on three and the incline on eight and that will kick your butt a little bit. So try that again, either fasted or post lifting. Just make sure your heart rate is up. That's the most important thing. If your heart rate's not high enough, then go a little higher with the incline and I guarantee you it will kick your butt. So the treadmill is just okay for me. I do utilize it, um, but it's not my favorite type of cardio. Okay, number three, hit cardio. Um, it's handy sometimes, but like I said before, be very careful with it because if you are already sore and you're taxing your muscles. So what is hit cardio? Let's talk about that for a minute. All the other types of cardio I'm touching on here are steady state cardio types of cardio where you're keeping your heart rate, you know, at 130 the whole time. So hit cardio is you can do it for like 15 or 20 minutes where you go hard and fast, where you literally cannot breathe at, um, or talk while you're breathing. <laughs> you know, that kind of boom, boom, boom type of fast cardio. Um, hit cardio. So do it for 30 seconds and then slow down and, you know, let's say you're sprinting on the treadmill, just for an example. Um, go hard as you can for 30 seconds and then you're going to, you know, just walk or slow it down for, um, you know, 45 seconds to a minute and repeat that and you're going to do it for 15 for 20 minutes. Yes, it torches a ton of calories. However, however, um, if you're super sore, let, you know, it's not something I would do um, after a leg day, for example. Now, the day of a leg day, yes, but I'm talking the next day, I'm too sore. There is no way um, I would do it. First of all, I can't sprint anymore anyway because I've got bad knees, but hit cardio can be done on any machine, a spin bike, um, an elliptical, uh, a Stairmaster, you can run outside. I mean, just, you know, you, you name it, you can do it. You can do it on the rower and you can even do battle ropes. So let me get to the battle ropes because those I really like. I use the battle ropes a lot and I generally will do hit cardio, like if I'm in contest prep or something, which I'm obviously not right now, but when I was, I would do uh, hit cardio with the battle ropes post shoulder day. So your shoulders are already like beat up from working them, right? So doing the battle ropes, you know, different ways where you throw them around like this or like this um, is super handy. So I do like doing that post lifting. This is also handy with the rower, like I mentioned before. The rower's great after back day to do like a hit cardio session. But again, if you are too sore, don't do it. You know, um, I much prefer steady state for the most part, um, but hit cardio can be handy sometimes. Now, hit cardio I'll only do twice a week. Uh, again, usually the battle, battle ropes after shoulder day and um, the rower after uh, back day. So try that. Um, but I really wouldn't do it uh, just super often because if you're lifting and trying to heal up, especially if you're older, 50, party of one here, I do not heal up as well as I used to. That is for darn sure. So be careful with that. Um, and how often do you cardio? I would start with, like I said, 20 minutes. Do it five days a week. Okay, start with that. Like I said, you don't want to start with too much cardio. Your body's going to adapt and adjust to what you're doing. I know it's like a parrot because I keep repeating myself on this, but it's so true. So just be careful with doing too much. Moving on to number two, the Stairmaster. All right, I am not a huge fan of the Stairmaster because, you know, most days my knees are a little achy, so it's harder for me to do it, but I do like it. Um, now, if you're gonna get on that thing, don't hold on for dear life. Like, you you know, we talked about with the treadmill. You've got to let go. And I know that's hard to, hard to do. You know, it reminds me of that song, let it go, let it go. All right, I can't sing. Everybody's gonna run away if I start singing. This won't end well. <laughs> so, the Stairmaster is a good form of cardio. Again, do it post-lifting. If you're super sore, I wouldn't do it, you know, like the next day after your leg day, but that's just me. Um, I find if I do too much of those things, my glutes will shrink from overtaxing them. So be really careful with that. Monitor how you feel. Your body will talk to you, but you got to listen, right? So the Stairmaster is great. It's a good form of cardio. Um, you can do it fasted if you want. You can do it post-lifting like we talked about before. But um, make sure you're not holding on and um, get, get that heart rate up. That's the most important thing is burning, torching some freaking calories. Get your heart rate up, girl <laughs> or guy, whoever's watching this. Um, but the Stairmaster, yeah, it's great. Uh, like I said, just, you know, don't hold on. <laughs> so many people are just like holding on and leaning back. And, and oh my God, when I see people doing kickbacks, doing it now, that's not going to do anything for your glutes. Don't do that crap. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of glutes, um, it don't rely on it to build your glutes. Okay. Glutes 
you know, trying, if you're trying to build glutes, that comes from your weightlifting, okay? Um, getting on the Stairmaster is not going to do much for your glutes. Just letting you know that because there is some kind of myth out there that getting on the Stairmaster, oh my God, it's going to give me great glutes. No, <laughs> that's where your lifting comes in. Okay, the number one, my absolute favorite cardio. You ready? The elliptical. Let me explain why. Uh, first off, you're using your whole body with that sucker. I mean, it's, you're just going, right? It gets your heart rate up really well. It's easy on your joints and knees. Um, you can let go if you want to or do it in intervals. Um, so I can't sprint anymore. But I tell you what, the elliptical, I can sprint on that sucker because it doesn't hurt my knees um, and, or any other joint. It um, doesn't hurt my hips, nothing like that. So if your gym has an elliptical, which most do, I would utilize that. If I was going to get one piece of equipment for my house, it would be the elliptical. Um, and I've collected equipment over the years. I've got a spin bike. I've got uh, a treadmill here. And the elliptical is usually my go-to. But I do utilize my treadmill too because that's handy if you're trying to get steps in. So let's talk about steps. You need to make sure you're getting 10,000 steps in a day. Why? Let me explain this too. We burn the most calories from our all-day activity. Okay, your cardio is just a tiny little piece of the puzzle. Think about how much you move around during the day. You're going shopping, you're going to the mall, um, you're running errands, you're getting gas, you're filling your car, whatever. All this, even this fidgeting that I do, I know I'm a, I talk with my hands all the time. <laughs> it annoys me, <laughs> but it is what it is. So even that fidgeting stuff, it burns calories. So your all day activity is where we burn the most calories. So just know that, try to get your 10,000 steps in a day, clock it with your watch. Um, you know, even this counts as a step though, so it's not 100% accurate, but um, you know, that's why I have my treadmill here to get my steps in when I need to get more. So 10,000 steps a day is perfect. Um, if you can get more than that, that's even better. If you have a desk job, they even have like little bike things that you can put under your desk now. And some of my clients use those and they do help. So don't underestimate the movement, you know, movement during the day. It does help. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, comment. Uh, let me know what you'd like to see next. I've uh, been wanting to do this one for a while. I'm in the process of writing a book right now and it's been tough to get in here and do my YouTube. So that's why you haven't seen me much on YouTube other than some of my shorts and my fun stuff. i um, been making my TikToks and Instagram. Speaking of which, if you are on Instagram, on TikTok, please make sure you follow there. Uh, I post lots of good tips there as well, but by far my YouTube is the most handy. So please share my things with your friend, my videos with your friends because we're all in this together. I've got no dog in this fight. I do this for free because I absolutely love to help people and I hope you can see that. That's just what I love to do. Um, I don't talk about products all that much I don't um, do like a lot of sponsored crap just be and for a reason um, because nobody wants to get on here and see ads for the most part so I try to steer clear of that stuff and keep it as organic as possible because I really care about you I want to help you and let's try to save you and your friends from shitty workouts and shitty information that doesn't freaking work so please share my videos with any of your friends because if, let me tell you if it helps you it's going to help them too and that's all I want to do is help everybody um, if I could reach through this phone, if I could reach through this phone and teach everybody how to do this correctly, um, how to eat right, how to work out right, if that was a thing, if that was possible, I would try to do it. So definitely, um, you know, share this, any videos I have with your friends and I appreciate you watching. And once again, we will see you next time.